I want to start today's Browns report off by thanking everyone who made the ultimate sacrifice to protect the great freedoms we have here at the United States. So thank you on Memorial Day to all the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice in protecting our country. Now, I want to really jump into today's show by talking about DeAndre Hopkins. So ESPN's Jeremy Fowler included the Browns as a DeAndre Hopkins destination. And surprise, surprise, other people outside of Cleveland are connecting the dots. Just Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, could we get a reunion by the lake? Potentially. Now, after June 1st, when the Browns get the John Johnson and Jadeveon Clowney money, they're going to have around 18-ish million dollars to spend. That's probably going to be just a little bit north of what I think DeAndre Hopkins might get on the open market. Now, at that point, Cleveland will rank around six. It could be up or down a few spots in the NFL for available cap space. So they will definitely have more money than others team than other teams to spend on Hopkins. Now, Jeremy Fowler put out a list of a whole bunch of destinations, and let's kind of run through these a little bit, right? The Bills and the Chiefs certainly make a lot of sense. They're both wide receiver needy-ish teams, more so than other spots out there. Plus, I think the Bills and the Chiefs might just sign the other, but it might just sign Hopkins so that the other team can't get them. The Jets, I don't know. They've already added a bunch of wide receivers this offseason, kind of like the Browns, but like the Browns, they're sort of in all-in mode here. The Cowboys have a lot of money to spend, but the Cowboys never do anything fun in free agency. So this would surprise me for sure. The Saints, they definitely have a need at wide receiver, and they're also in a division that's wide open. So Hopkins really could, you know, push them over the edge. And now we get to the Browns, who are going to be around 17-ish million dollars. The G-Men, I can see for a need at wide receiver, they're a little bit short on cash. Atlanta definitely needs a wide receiver, more so than any other team on this list. And the Patriots would make sense if Bill O'Brien was not their offensive coordinator. But I think hell will freeze over before DeAndre Hopkins goes and plays under Bill O'Brien again. I've kind of tossed and turned when it comes to this. I've had my Twitter mentions blown up in like World War III landscape, but I'm kind of starting to trend towards a F it. Like, why not, right? The Browns are already all in. They went for Zadarius Smith. They have pushed all their chips into the middle of the table. Why not toss your credit card in the middle as well, right? I mean, are you better with DeAndre Hopkins in 2023? Yes. Is that the best thing for this team long term? Probably not. But this team is trying to win a Super Bowl right now. And if you kind of look around the sports landscape here, like, for example, look at the NHL playoffs, right? The Florida Panthers, they made a big trade right before the season, right? Getting Matthew Kachuk. And now they're in the Stanley Cup Finals. So if you're Cleveland and you see a window, which is right now with Nick Chubb and Miles Garrett and Amari Cooper all still under contract and in their prime, and of course Deshaun Watson and you think Hopkins could be the difference maker, who am I to really be a rain cloud and say, no, don't, don't, don't get D-Hop. And t- trust me, it's not going to work out. Because I do think Hopkins is still a good wide receiver. So if we can all agree that Hopkins is a good player, then what's stopping the Cleveland Browns from going out and getting Deshaun Watson's best bud from Houston? Now, if I really had to predict where D-Hop goes... I think the Bills might end up signing him, right? They have come up very short, like just barely short the last couple of postseasons. And the last thing they want to see is to lose in the AFC Championship game to the Chiefs or to the Bengals. And it's because the other team had DeAndre Hopkins. So for that reason, I think the Bills would make the most sense. I'm also unsure how interested Cleveland is, right? I could see why Hopkins would want to come to Cleveland, play for a contending team, reunite with Deshaun Watson. But do the Browns have interest in uh, DeAndre Hopkins? That is the big hurdle that I think we have to cross first. Now, here's what Jeremy Fowler also added on saying, read I got on DeAndre Hopkins and why some teams believe he would get released. Was $19 million salary always prohibited? Uh, Even if non-guaranteed, teams that wanted rework deal at lesser clip weren't convinced he would take. Odell Beckham's big money making uh, taking even less tougher. So, Odell Beckham is probably a good blueprint, probably a good comp and a starting point for what is DeAndre Hopkins going to get. Like Jeremy Fowler pointed out, if OBJ got a one-year, $15 million contract, DeAndre Hopkins has every right to make an argument that he should get more than that, right? I mean, OBJ didn't play a snap of football last year. 
and Baltimore threw him $15 million. Probably a bit of an overpay because they were kind of bidding with themselves to win Lamar Jackson's heart over. But that sort of set the baseline for what 30-ish year old wide receivers get on the open market. So would not be surprised if D-Hop goes, OBJ got 15? What have I done the last two years compared to him? I want 16, 17, or 18 million. I don't know if he's going to get that because a lot of money is dried up at this point. But it might cost that much for Hopkins. So before we even get further into today's show, because we've got a lot of ground to cover, should the Browns sign DeAndre Hopkins? Yes or no? Sound off me down in the comment section. Here's what Jeremy Fowler wrote up when he talked about the Browns as one of his destinations. Hopkins has pre-existing chemistry with Deshaun Watson. They played together in Houston from 2017 to 2019, and pairing him with Amari Cooper would deepen the intrigue in the AFC North. Cleveland GM Andrew Barry has been very aggressive this offseason in bolstering the defense, and signing Hopkins would be a nod to maximizing Watson's window. And I couldn't really disagree with anything Jeremy Fowler just said right there. Does DeAndre Hopkins make this a better team? Yes, this team is better with DeAndre Hopkins on it than not on it. Is Hopkins the best thing for this team long term, right? If you're thinking about the future wide receiver and you know that this team will have a season past 2023, signing a bunch of veteran to one-year deal contracts might not make the best sense if you want to help develop some of your one younger wide receivers. Now, before we look at even more of the nuts and bolts and kind of go through the pros and cons of adding DeAndre Hopkins, we are in second place here at Chat Sports within the AFC North for subscribers. We've got a nice cushion between us and the Ravens at third. I'm not really concerned about those mouth breathers down there, but let's catch up to Steelers talk at 25,000 subs. Let's start chip, chip, chipping away at it, baby. We don't have to get four touchdowns in one day, but we got to start getting some points on the board. So hit that sub button down below if you hate Pittsburgh. Now, like I was saying, when it comes to the Browns thinking long term, you did draft Cedric Tillman with your first pick in the draft. You used your original second round pick to get Elijah Moore. And then you gave Marquise Goodwin a $1.7 million contract, which is not a ton of money, but $400,000 was guaranteed. So it'd be pretty, you know, uh, malpractice GM wise for Andrew Barry to guarantee someone $400,000 of, of, of someone else's money and then to cut him a few weeks later. But I could see why uh, Andrew Barry would want to see how these three moves that he made pan out before he goes and signs Hopkins and kind of pushes everyone down a little bit. And then, like I said, you traded for Elijah Moore. Like, you went after your blockbuster wide receiver uh, this offseason when you did a day two pick swap with uh, the New York Jets and essentially used those two picks, right? Pick 42 on Elijah Moore and then pick 74 on, 70, on, De excuse me, on Cedric Tillman. So... Cleveland has made a lot of moves at the wide receiver position already. Did they make those moves because they had didn't think that there was a world out there where they could get DeAndre Hopkins, right? Were they like, we're not trading for Hopkins. We're not trading for his contract. Or do they make those moves because they're not interested in DeAndre Hopkins, whether he's a free agent or not, and they like these wide receivers more, right? I think Andrew Barry would probably want to see how the two biggish moves he made this offseason panned out. Now, we're going to look at stats a little bit later on, and no one's going to argue that Cedric Tillman and Elijah Moore are going to combine to be better than DeAndre Hopkins this year. It's a possibility. It happens in the NFL where you get some surprising young receivers rising, but, I mean, I'm not going to stake my career on the line of, no, give me Cedric Tillman over DeAndre Hopkins, but I wonder if Andrew Barry is going to go, I've done my moves at wide receiver. Let's see how those guys work out, right? Before I start bringing in more veterans, how about we get the young guys some water and some sunlight to grow? Having said all that, if Andrew Barry thinks DeAndre Hopkins is not the missing piece to this offense, but just the cherry on top, which was already had three cherries on top place this offseason, don't rule out Andrew Barry for making a blockbuster move. Blockbuster AB, as I call him, is always good to help and improve this team's roster with all the money and all the resources at its disposal in Berea. Now, make sure to get today's uh, sponsor going down below because we've got an awesome two-shirt combo. Chatsports.com slash CLE combo. This is not going to run forever, probably the last week or so to get one today. So make sure you do so. Use that exclusive link, chatsports.com slash CLE combo. 
I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little bit tired of just trying to remember DeAndre Hopkins' se uh, stats over the last four seasons. But in case you're not a regular routine viewer, here are the numbers on Hopkins. I think it kind of goes without saying. DeAndre Hopkins is a great wide receiver. He's a top 10 wide receiver probably when he plays a full season. Uh, he's definitely getting up there in the age column, and there's some guys that might be pushing him out from, you know, 9 to 10, maybe towards 11 to 12, but it's still DeAndre Hopkins. And, of course, he had such an awesome connection with Deshaun Watson in Houston right from the get-go when uh, Watson took over and before he tore his ACL his rookie season. 31 touchdowns from 2017 to 2019. Hopkins was one of the best. And then you look at what Hopkins did in 2019, his last full season with Deshaun Watson, 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. So you take what those two did in 2019 and you compare them to what you have in Elijah Moore and Donovan Peoples-Jones because that's who he'd kind of be robbing some snaps from. It's not even a competition, right? It, it, it isn't. Just look at the career stats from Hopkins compared to Moore and DPJ. I mean, 10x what he's what DPJ and Moore have done in their career. 71 touchdowns compared to their 14 combined. Now, it's not fair because Hopkins has been around the league for longer and he's better. But the point remains, adding DeAndre Hopkins improves this wide receiver room. I don't think anyone can really say they are better off without him than with him. But the argument, the pushback would be, does Andrew Barry want to go add another wide receiver after making two moves this offseason, three moves already for one? That I'm not so sure about. All right, before we sign off, it is time for our random pick a card time here. Scorpion with a super thanks. Appreciate you, Scorpion. Sorry I missed the live show. I was too busy graduating. Let's go, dog pound, woof, roof, or rough, rough. Love you guys. Keep it up, PD Scorpion. Thank you so much for the super thanks and congratulations on graduating. So it kind of got me thinking, if you want to have an official, you know, random card picker included, you can super thanks your queen of hearts, jack of spades, whatever you're thinking, and we'll toss it on right before we do the random pick a card. I'm not going to steal ones from the comment section, otherwise people are just going to lie and pretend they got it, that way they can get on screen. But with that being said, it is pick a card time. Producer Jack Lauderay, uh, behind the ones and twos today, coming in on Memorial Day with me, so shout out to Jack for... Uh, sacrificing one of his holidays. Uh, but Jack, you want to pick a card? Give me the Ten of Spades. Ten of Spades. I kind of like the confidence, right? You, you just went for it right there. How about two of hearts? I'll go two of hearts. One last cut. Not even close. Seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds. I feel like we got seven diamonds once before. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see everyone tomorrow.